Hello, and welcome to the AP Podcast. I'm your host, Archer Heron, and it is today, November 2nd, 2019, and a lot of stuff's been going around the NFL recently. Um, the NFL trade deadline happened two days ago, and we saw a couple players get dropped, a couple players get traded, obviously, but nothing really too crazy. Um, and yeah, I wanted to jump into this episode talking about Jamal Adams. Um, I think that whatever's going on in New York, it's just not the kind of situation you want to be in with your football team. And this goes for every person and player in that organization. Um, Jamal Adams recently was very angry at his GM because Jamal Adams had talked, had a sit-down conversation with the coach, the owner, and the general manager talking about how Jamal Adams wanted to stay with the Jets in New York. And in Jamal Adams' eyes, when the GM fielded some calls for Jamal for a Jamal Adams trade, Jamal Adams saw that as somebody going behind his back and kind of betraying him, trying to get him out. When in reality, the general manager is just trying to do his job. The general manager's job is to field calls and make the team better. And uh, one of the biggest remarks Jamal Adams had to say is, that the Rams aren't fielding calls for Aaron Donald, and that the uh, the Chiefs aren't fielding calls for Patrick Mahomes. When in reality, Jamal Adams is really good, but he's not MVP caliber. He's not at that talent level, and I think he sees himself that way, which probably should lay lay on the brakes a little bit there, Jamal Adams. But in all, I think that the GM was really just trying to do his job and that this was a misunderstanding. Because when Jamal Adams said that, oh, I don't want to get traded, he thought that meant I'm not going to be talked about for trades. When if somebody's offering a third round, uh, I mean, three first round picks, something crazy, which nobody was. But if somebody was offering that for Jamal Adams, then I I would be very lenient to take that trade if I were the GM. The GM's job is to make the team better, and in doing so, he has to consider every possibility. Um, Another player involved in the trade deadline would be Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake was traded from the Miami Dolphins to the um, Arizona Cardinals for a fifth-round pick, and uh, the Dolphins and the Dolphins are 100% tanking right now. There is no doubt in my mind that that is what they're doing. But Kenyon Drake has been a very talented running back his entire life. And uh, he really just got put in a bit of a stinky situation with the Dolphins down in Miami. He was underutilized by Adam Gase. And then, now that they have their new head coach, he's he's just not being used. It's sad because he's so talented and he has so much potential, but he's not getting put with the teams that are letting him reach that potential. The Arizona Cardinals are a team that can help him. Cliff Kingsbury knows what he's doing. He's a good head coach from what we've seen so far. And um, with the injuries to David Johnson and Chase Edmonds, who I think is really good, um, he's really good. And if if Kenyon Drake can continue to work on his resume a little bit more, because I don't think he'll stay with the Arizona Cardinals for more than a year. Unless David Johnson retires like Andrew Luck or something. But I think that he can get put on a good team. Like uh, uh, the Eagles might need a new might need a running back for the time being. Because Miles Sanders, they're just not giving him any opportunities. He can go to a running back needy team and really help them out. He's really good. And I think people in the offseason might dish out some cash for Kenyon Drake if he continues to play and to get the opportunities that he needs. Um, another thing that happened, which kind of an odd trade, was a keep to leave to the Dolphins. The Dolphins are very weird because they're trading for a keep to leave, and they're getting rid of picks. Which, in my eyes, if they're tanking. <laughs> it should be the other way around. Um. This was most likely a way for the Rams to get rid of Akib Tlaib and a salary dump because he still has another year on his contract and they don't want to pay it. 
so they're making the Dolphins, but I'm really kind of not well-versed in what Aqib Tlaib's been doing around the league. I know that he's he's on IR right now with some problems to his ribs, but other than that, I uh, I don't know what to say about that trade. Kind of an odd one in my opinion, but hey, what can you say? Another thing that happened was Josh Gordon was dropped by the New England Patriots, and um, very uh, weird situation. Because Josh Gordon is a great wide receiver. He has the potential to be a top 10 wide receiver if he can stay out of trouble. He's got the talent to be a top 10 wide receiver. But he has now been picked up off the waivers by the Seattle Seahawks. Who I don't know how they got Josh Gordon when there's other teams out there with worse records that needed Josh Gordon. But who knows? Maybe they know something we don't about Josh Gordon. But um, Russell Wilson now has another wide receiver to help him add to his MVP resume. Josh Gordon, if he can keep stay healthy and play well, this uh, Seattle offense is very dangerous if you're playing them. Uh, Josh Gordon is a great wide receiver. They've got multiple people around Russell Wilson that help him out. Tyler Lockett is an incredible wide receiver. They've got uh, Nick Vanette, who's a decent tight end. Chris Carson in the backfield. Rashad Penny's a really good pass-catching running back. And um, they look really good. And I'm not just saying this because, Josh Gordon, they've been looking good. But they've kind of been underrated a little bit, I guess. Or maybe just not seen in the light as they should have. And I think Josh Gordon's opening the tunnel and letting the light flood into this really good Seattle Seahawks squad. And I think that's kind of cool. Um, I kind of wanted to switch over to some stuff outside of the news. I wanted to talk about um, the Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers. Um, Cam Newton um, is not looking too healthy. And he is going to a specialist, a very well-known specialist around the NFL in foot injuries in Green Bay. And um, I don't think Cam Newton's going to play the rest of this season. I've heard that his injury is not prog- is not getting better at all, that he's still in a ton of pain, and he's not able to do some of the things he would be able to do outside of that pain. And I think that the Panthers are making a smart decision here. And uh, I if, they, if Cam Newton doesn't play the rest of the season, that's better for the team. Because Kyle Allen, who needs more time to prove himself, he had a really rough week in San Francisco, but happens to every quarterback. Um, Kyle Allen can continue to lead this team. Um, if they can continue playing well and win, they uh, they might be able to add a couple more wins to their uh, stat sheet and possibly get into sneak into the playoffs. They can keep playing well. They need to let Kyle Allen do what he's been doing, which is making good decisions in the pocket. And throwing it throwing it away when he needs to, he's a pretty classic quarterback. But he does everything right, which is really really nice. He had a he he hadn't been throwing interceptions at all, and then against 49ers, he threw what was it two maybe three interceptions, and um, that goes to show that this 49ers defense is no joke. That they are really good, and um, but beside that's besides the point. I think Cam Newton. He needs to sit out the rest of this year with this toe injury. He needs to rehab, and he needs to get back onto the field next year. And I think he should play next year. But for now, Kyle Allen is the starting quarterback in uh, Carolina. Another uh, tidbit about Carolina is that uh, Christian McCaffrey, if he keeps playing the way he's been playing, is on pace for 2,456 yards uh, from scrimmage, and that is incredible. That is just otherworldly, my lord. And that that isn't quite there on uh, CJ Two K Chris Johnson's season, um, his two thousand yard rushing season. But Cam, I mean, all he needs is a couple more yards on a couple more plays, and he can beat the averages. And I think if if he can do that, he can win the MVP because um uh. The, the NFL loves stats. They love seeing players' stat, 
run the stat sheet, have touchdowns, have yards. And um, there hasn't been a running back to win the MVP or any out of position other than quarterback. There's only been two players in the past 15 years that have won it. And that is LaDainian Tomlinson in 2006, and that is uh, Adrian Peterson in 2012. And I kind of think Christian McCaffrey, if he keeps it up, can make that three people in the past 16 years. He's insanely talented, and um, he's he was drafted at the right time in the draft, and um, he is really good. I don't know what else to say about him. He is versatile, agile. He's a he can be a workhorse, which is crazy given his size. He's fast and he can catch the ball. He's really smart when it comes to football. It's really fun to watch him play. I hope to see a lot more from Christian McCaffrey. Um, next thing I wanted to talk about was the uh, not Cincinnati Bengals. Um, I wanted to talk about the Cleveland Browns and Baker Mayfield. Yesterday, I was listening to Zach Schalmer's Strong Opinion Sports Podcast. Really great podcast. Go ahead and check him out. I'll leave a link to his podcast in the description. But he was talking about Baker Mayfield, and he was doing a, a small film analysis on him, which is one of his recurring segments. And he was talking about how the Browns' offense is not being run correctly through Freddie Kitchens and the offensive coordinator. It is kind of sad what they've been doing because they think they have the talent and power to do it, when in reality, they do. But their offensive line is garbage, and the way they're playing, can't they can't run what they've been running without a good offensive line, and that's what why they've been struggling. He was talking about how um, they run a lot of play action, uh, uh, deep routes where they want to get Odell or Jarvis Landry the ball on a 25, 30-yard streak or something crazy. And they don't le- and they make uh, the running back kind of block for them, block for Baker Mayfield, get up in there and add a little bit more pass protection. But uh, if you take away the running back, you also take away the check down because they're sending everybody downfield. And that is not what you should do with an offensive line like what the Browns have. They need to give Baker Mayfield more options across the field on some shallow routes instead of just doing these play-action uh, deep passes every play. It's not working out for them as their record can show. And um, I think Baker Mayfield is starting to get a little frustrated. And When you get frustrated, you get flustered. And then you play worse. And then your teammates start... Uh, not disliking you, but really not believing in you as much. And that's when your upwards trajectory that he had last year starts to plummet and go down, like hitches in the road. And um, I'm sure there are examples that this, have ha- that this has happened to in the past. But um, Baker Mayfield right now is looking bad. He's not making good plays. He's not uh, throwing the ball away when he needs to. He's taking so many st- sacks because of this offensive line. But he's also holding on to the ball so long because he's waiting for these plays to develop downfield when he really needs to be taking it uh, a little bit faster and throwing these checkdowns. Also, Nick Chubb, I was watching him against the Patriots, looks so good. Playing the Patriots defense, he was incredible. He was breaking tackles. He was averaging, like, after the first quarter, like 10 yards per carry or something crazy. He was like getting these long streaking runs and it wasn't because of the blocking it was because of Nick Chubb's ability to to power through and kind of get hit and stay up get hit he's got great balance he's got really really good vision he saw lots of opportunities like sometimes when you watch a running back play you're like why didn't he hit that hole why didn't he juke to the left instead of the right um But when you watch Nick Chubb, you don't have that many of those moments where you're like, why did he do that? Nick Chubb knows what he's doing. And um, I think that Freddie Kitchens and the offensive coordinator are starting to catch on to that and see, oh, wow, Nick Chubb is really good. We need to give him the ball more. And um, I think if they can do that and they can give Baker a little bit of a break from these deep play action passes where he's getting pummeled by 
300 pound defensive lineman every play I think that they can kind of turn their season around and maybe improve their record I think the playoffs are long gone for uh, the Browns but um we'll see we will see in a couple weeks and uh when that time comes I'll update you but I also wanted to talk about Kareem Hunt's um position in this Browns offense when he does come back week 10 um I have no idea what they're going to do with Kareem Hunt. I have no idea when they're going to implement him into the offense after he comes back from his suspension. And I don't know if they're even going to try to utilize him that much. Kareem Hunt was uh, cut from the Chiefs last season because of an incident regarding a little bit of violence towards a woman, and he was kicking her, which is never okay. He should not have done that. And he got cut and punished by the NFL. And now he's on a team, not the lead runner. He is, uh, this is his third year in the league. He barely played last year. And it's really hard to gauge and judge what we think he's going to do when we have nothing to gauge it off of. We have a year ago, or two years ago, he played incredibly. As a rookie, he went off and was one of the best running backs in the league. And then, We kind of take a look at uh, the past year, and he played well when he was on the Chiefs, and then all this stuff happened, and this stuff gets to you as a player. It really gets to your head and makes you think, wow, what's happening? I thought I was good. Why did I get cut? Why did I do that? What was I thinking? And Kareem Hunt, if he can get past that mental barrier, I think he can be a really successful running back. But I think... Because Freddie Kitchens and the Browns are kind of starting to see Nick Chubb's potential and how good he really is, because he's really good, I think that uh, Kareem Hunt's um, his uh, kind of usefulness in this offense will not be as drastic as people might have thought at the beginning of the season. Kareem Hunt is a really good running back, but I don't think he fits with Nick Chubb. I don't know if they can really pull off a a tandem but if they can then the Browns running game is deadly and that's scary for anybody in the AFC because the Patriots had a hard time containing him uh containing Nick Chubb and now if they have to contain Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt that is not fun for any defense in the in the NFL um that is I think I'm gonna leave this episode here it's a bit of a shorter one But um, that happens sometimes. A lot of stuff to talk about. Not a lot of uh, long dialogue about it. But uh, there's always next week. I will see you after Sunday. Uh, We'll see what happens this week in the NFL. And um, next week, I think I'm going to do a couple um, matchup uh, rewinds. Kind of look at what happened last week. What happened in the game. I'll watch a lot of the games. Make sure I know what happened. And... um, Thank you for listening so much. Go ahead and check us out on Spotify and our Instagram, AP Sports. We've been posting a lot. Uh, Thank you so much, and I'll catch you next week. Bye-bye.